So I'm recording and if you want to take your picture off, you can certainly do that. Um, so a lot of things have been kind of going through my mind about what do we want to talk about? What would be most beneficial for you? And, and I plan on doing a series of talks about supplements and vitamins and things like that. But I think the thing that dawned on me the most was what are the keys to success in working with a functional medicine practitioner? So um, I don't have like a prepared graphic, but I wanted to um, put together and start a discussion and, and I will have my um, assistant make a, a great graphic for us moving on. And I'm gonna share my screen. So in my mind, and we can, we can kind of brainstorm this when we get into the closed group, I noticed that there are kind of four C's in the success. How do you get the most out of working with a functional medicine practitioner, a lifestyle coach, a nutritional coach, whatever you're trying to do to enhance and improve your life. And the first thing that came to mind for me was commitment. But what does that mean? Commitment? Does that mean, uh, are we married? Uh, what level of commitment are you asking me for? Those are, that's a big question. But I immediately went to the readiness quiz or the readiness assessment, right? So in that readiness assessment, and you've all, if you haven't taken it, um, and if you're new to functional medicine, you can request to take it. Most all new clients take it. And it gives you an idea of what might be asked of you. So yeah, I can commit, but I'm not gonna, I'll give you an example like, hey, can you, you know, commit to three days a week to exercising or eating well? Well, it depends. It depends. You know, does it include my family? And there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of things that go along with the word commitment. But I think a great place to start is the readiness quiz. And uh, I can send that. That'll be attached to this particular um, lecture so that if you haven't taken it, you can go ahead and take it if you're watching this after the fact. And really ask about what kind of. Um, commitment to lifestyle or food are you going to ask me or meditation or stress management? So we can talk about commitment and what does that look like? What does that mean for you? Because each person I believe has a different readiness level. Maybe they can commit to a certain portion, but they can't be a hundred percent in. But what does that look like for your success? Those are all questions that you should have or discussion that you should have with your functional medicine practitioner, with your coach. And this is a great way to start the conversation, especially like in a complimentary consult with anyone. Um, what does commitment look like in your practice? So I, I think commitment is number one. My next thing that I really wanted to talk about, and um, this one is community. I put my, there we go. Community, that's a big word. We're trying to grow a community here in our group visits. You can grow communities on social media. And that's where I think a majority of people have transferred to. Um, digital communities, I think are okay um, because it opens your, world globally, actually. Um, and we could talk about what that is. But there's something to be said for an intimate community where you can be together as a group and forge relationships, forge um, support. I think a, about a lot of support groups for complex health issues, uh, even substance abuse issues, things like that, that people really rely on their community and that one-on-one -on -one contact. And your practitioner, your functional medicine practitioner is part of that community. Your health coach is part of that community. But so are the people who are like-minded. 
Interestingly enough, I think, I don't know, but I tend to forget that my family is part of that community. My friends are part of that community. So when you're embarking on a new lifestyle change uh, for improving or correcting something that's going on, and you need to make some Maybe you're going to go completely gluten-free, right? And your kids are going to have a meltdown because you're not eating macaroni and cheese anymore uh, or pizza or something like that. So that community of your family, they don't, I don't, and Rapali, you can chime in on this if you want. I don't think that family needs to be all in a hundred percent into what you're doing, but at least the level of understanding about what you're doing and a willingness to support you in those changes. So not that they have to be eat what you eat, although it would be easier when we're all cooking dinner, right? (laughs) But I think that having that, all those aspects of community and um, making sure that we have that appropriate support. And if we don't have it at home, where are we going to get it? It's hard to be an island when you're trying to make these changes. And um, we know that I think the the statistic is you need 21 days of consistent um, uh, practice in making a change before it becomes a new habit, right? And I think that's what we're trying to do is trying to guide you into new habits that support your body and support your optimization for your health. So we can talk a little bit about the nuances of community. And I think um, that's a good one. And then this is one of my favorite, communication. So that's a big word as well. And I often, my motto used to be communicate early and communicate often, but It's the quality of the communication, right? It's um, it's what are you trying to communicate? Are you are you communicating your needs? Are you communicating your wants? Are you communicating your goals, your preferences? And when you're dealing, I think, in functional medicine, that kind of two-way communication is foreign to a lot of you because you have had this experience in allopathic or Western medicine where you communicate your concern, you communicate your need, and then you're just kind of given a set of instructions. There's no dialogue back and forth or it's an abbreviated dialogue, right? It's where you don't really get to communicate your concerns, or maybe someone's made a suggestion to you, another healthcare practitioner, and you're not on board with that. And so you go back to commitment. I'm not committed to what they just asked me to do. And there's no extended dialogue um, in Western medicine. In some cases there are, and I think that in integrative practices, And in certain, if you're lucky to get an allopathic physician that's really in tune to communication, I think that you're lucky and uh, foster those relationships. But communication and functional medicine is really a two-way street. It's an open mind. It's listening. Um, That's the hardest thing that I've ever had to learn was listening. Uh, I think listening is a skill that can be learned and fine-tuned and checking yourself. Am I listening to what my practitioner is trying to tell me? Is my practitioner listening to me? Is my coach listening to me? Am I listening to my coach? So uh, communication is is a big part of the success. So how do you communicate with your practitioner? How available is your practitioner? I put together the group visits because it's another way for everyone to communicate and have an opportunity to speak with me on a weekly basis. That's unheard of in traditional allopathic uh, medicine. Uh, 
And if it, if it is, if you do have the ability to, to communicate with the team, right, the medical team, uh, it's usually someone who's not able or in a position to make a decision. They have to kind of relay the message. It's like playing telephone, right? So understanding what kind of communication your practitioner would like uh, and are you on board with that? You know, I try to make it extremely, um, I'm, I'm moving to the platform of practice better where you can have specific periods of the day where you might have instant messaging available to you. You might have emails, uh, you can send text messages for limited things. Um, and so there's always this ability to communicate even on the fly, which uh, I really like. And then in these live, private um, group sessions. So I think communication is uh, important, but what are we communicating and are we communicating it effectively? And then, so the last thing whoop, is consistency. So what do I mean by consistency? Well, it's kind of a big word like commitment. What can I be consistent with? And that is where, when you're working with a functional medicine practitioner, it's our job to try and kind of tease out to you your preferences. Example, um, I um, when it comes to meditation, there are different all kinds of forms of meditation. I know myself well enough to know that I'm not the kind of person that's going to sit in a meditative pose and uh, meditate for 20 minutes a day. I know that about myself. How do I know that? Because I've tried it. And I've tried, I had a meditation coach um, who had me do an exercise where I had to sit for 20 minutes in a meditative pose. I didn't have to meditate, but I had, I could you know, read a book, I could watch TV, I could do whatever, but I had to sit in that pose for 20 minutes and I had to do it daily for one week. I think I did it for three days because I, and I kept shortening the time and I kept shortening the time. Was it, could I, could I do it eventually? Probably, um, but it wasn't my preference and I couldn't maintain the consistency. So when we're looking at success in functional medicine, this is where I talk about the toolbox. And where we have to come and take a lot of communication and understanding your commitment and understanding that we have to put tools in your toolbox that are versatile and that can help you get through certain roadblocks that may come up. So example, uh, we're working on, maybe we're working on stress management, and we're working on a therapeutic diet and um, making sure you have enough community and support around you. And you have a huge family gathering coming up. Maybe it's a wedding or even worse, uh, an illness or a funeral or uh, where tensions are very high. And the consistency of your program and the plan that you worked out with your functional medicine practitioner all of a sudden just disintegrates, right? And you walk into this kind of very emotional, physically um, uneasy space. How do you deal with that? Because this is life, right? Life happens, we have to understand how to take different tools in our toolbox to make sure that we're having a level of consistency so that we're not so far off track that we can't get back to our um, core program, our core therapy, treatment, food, whatever it might be. And um, we don't do a backslide. Now backslides happen, but the key I think is that toolbox and educating you on when to pull those things out when you're faced with a um, obstacle or an unusual situation that you weren't planning on or came up. Um, 
So we can talk about this a little bit more in detail and maybe you guys even have more things that we could either put in these um, categories or even add an at another category. But the consistency also lends to graduation. When you have reached your health goals and you are feeling great, your MSQ or your multi-symptom score, your health scores come down into a nice, you feel great, you've got your energy back, the pain is gone. And it's, okay, so now you're ready to graduate from an intensive program with functional medicine. How do we maintain that consistency? How do we maintain that forward progress? So consistency also talks about what happens when I graduate? How do I maintain the community and the communication with my practitioner? And I have that put together in my membership plan in that basic membership so that you still have the ability to connect in the group visits. You still have the ability to see the health coach you still have um, the ability to get a certain discount on maintenance supplements. And then you have the ability in the basic plan, which I think I should call the graduate plan, um, to jump back in to an active appointment if you should need it at a, um, at a graduate discount, right? So you're not cutting ties with your team that got you to where you want to be, you're just holding them at arm's length to see if you can fly on your own for a little while as you graduate. But we're always here as community um, to help you maintain your forward progress and consistency. So uh, I think that uh, at this point, I don't see any questions coming in the chat or anything like that. And 